Today I'm going to review another pattern. If you didn't know, I'm trying to dabble in online patterns and trying to get some made. And I'm just like doing a little research, seeing what comes with them, what's involved with them. So I am going to test out another one. This one is actually by Mimi G. And it is the 100... Nope, no it's not. <laughs> it's the 1017 Annie Cardigan. Um, it's on her shop. I will link it in the description below. Initial review is it comes with a lot of information. Like it's definitely different from the last one I've done. It comes with a table of contents, clearly size charts. It's printing information, shopping list fabric. So Mimi is really giving you like all the information you need to complete this pattern, like things you need to buy, what to look out for when you cut. So I like it. I just, for me, when I first downloaded it, it was a little overwhelming. Um, just of all the information, even as like someone as experienced as me, it is just a lot of information. Like she gives you uh, the pins to buy, the needles to buy, and it's good for beginners. Like if you don't know what to do and it's just something you want to try out, if you don't know what you need, I think Mimi G's pattern is probably a good one for you because it gives you like you will need this needle, you will want to use this stitch. So that's like really cool and breaking it down like it's bare bones, you, everything you would need to do this fast. So I think that's really good. Uh, it's just like, again, I said overwhelming. Overwhelming for me, just like take it all in. So you like really have to take the time to sit and look at the instructions and all that. Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Delayat from thedelayatb.com and I'm a fashion designer creating videos about fashion design and sewing. The significance of this week's video is featuring black owned businesses, specifically black woman owned businesses. We have Mimi G's pattern, her cardigan pattern, and the style will also feature buttons from Tabitha Sewer. Both are black women in the sewing space and I am proud to feature them both in this style. This is the fabric I'm going to do it in. It's um, a stash fabric. So again, trying to use what I have in stash to one, make room and to, you know, save the coins, use what I have while I have it and um, invest on the bigger projects. I talked about setting boundaries, primarily financial boundaries when it comes to my sewing projects. So I'm really trying to be mindful of how much money I spend on which projects. Some projects really warrant the coin, some projects don't. So, you know, just keeping that in mind. The next project I want to do, if it comes out, when it comes out this month, will be costly. So I'm like trying to balance it out. Probably like one costly project a month just to save coin to get to that. Uh, but yeah, so let's get into it. Okay, so I've finished cutting everything out and I've just familiarized myself with the pattern. And I'm already gonna say the first thing, the main thing I really don't like is there's no button marks, like there's no marks or notches or whatever that show the positions of the buttons and button holes. It is left up to the sewer entirely and that can leave a lot of room for mistakes if you're new. But also I don't want to think that much, like just tell me where to put the buttons and the button holes, like please. <laughs> but um, I do have a tool that will help with that, like for spacing the button, so that's not that big of a deal. But other than that, the directions seem fairly easy. It does have you put the body first before the pockets, uh, before putting the pocket on. So I'm actually not gonna follow that instruction because it's easier to put the pocket on before sewing a whole garment. Like you're dealing with one piece instead of like a whole garment. So I'm gonna do the pockets first and go against the instructions. Other than that, I'm going to follow the instructions as best I can. Before we get into this pocket construction, can we hear it one time for just pockets in general? <laughs> like I love pockets, soft pockets, comfortable pockets. It's it's a comfort for me. I don't really know where it comes from, but anything that has pockets other than jeans, which are too tight and too small, anything that has pockets is an absolute plus, is an absolute love for me. If you're down for a good pocket, write pockets in the comment box. If you're not and you find something else comforting, let me know what that is. Okay, so I just finished the pre-work of the pocket itself. I did the clean finish at the top like the instructions said and then I pressed under the sides so it'll be nice and crisp when I sew it down. Like I mentioned before, the pattern didn't come with button marks on it and it also didn't come with pocket placement marks on it. 
So it's something I had to do by hand. Also something that's a little annoying, I would have liked it on the pattern. Either way, it's a simple patch pocket where you take the pocket piece and sew it onto the surface of the garment. Pockets are on. That was probably the most tedious part of this um, project, of this pattern. Um, just making sure everything stays straight and on grain and whatnot. So everything else I should fly right by. So we're gonna put what the fronts and the back together uh, at the shoulder seams and then put the sleeve on and then do that side seam trick and we should be close to done. Honestly, I feel not much needs to be said here. We've done this a number of times in the ruche dress, the DIY turtleneck and the sweater knit wrap dress. So it's basically the same thing. We're going to put in the sleeve at the shoulder. Then we're gonna close the side seam from the bottom of the sleeve all the way down to the bottom of the cardigan. So yeah, we've done this plenty of times. <laughs> Once the main body is together, I am adding the cuff to the hem or the bottom of the cardigan. It's a little wide and thick for my taste, but it is what it is. So I pin it and then I'll serge it and iron this one also. Now it's time for the front band, front binding, front facing, I don't know what they're calling it. It's time for that. So I'm going to also pin this around the entire front edge of the garment. So from the hem to the neck, back down to the hem on the other side. We're gonna overlock that together and also iron it. And lastly, well, almost lastly, there's the sleeve cuffs. So I fold the cuff in half lengthwise, serge that up, and then I fold it in half widthwise, serge that up, and then iron it. Okay, so I'm trying the cardigan on and it fits and I like it. I'm not finished yet because I am waiting on the buttons. I ordered buttons from Tab of the Sewer like a couple days ago, so I'm waiting for them to get here. But honestly, I didn't think I was gonna like this cardigan or wear it because like I'm not a cardigan type of person, but with the way staying at home and working from home is going, I might just don this a lot more than I thought I would. So my buttons just came. How bad is it that I feel like I want to sing? You just got a letter. We just got a letter. I wonder who it's from. I'm just kidding. Okay, so <laughs> my buttons came. I did open because I can't open one-handed. So I opened the envelope, but I have not taken them out yet. It's way down in there. It's way down in there. All right. So we got the button. Oh my goodness. You're so pretty. You're so pretty. So they have like a little shine to them. When I bought them, I didn't know that. They kind of remind me of my last glasses, the one that got lost in the lake. But anyway, so I like that fleck on it. Dude, these are so pretty. Oh, Where's the fabric? Okay, so here's the fabric. And like, dope. So dope. All right, now I just gotta put the buttonholes in. Let's get it done. So we already know I hate buttonholes. Buttonholes and sweater knit isn't any better. I did have a little trouble in the beginning in just getting everything um, lined up and through the machine because the sweater knit was so thin, but we eventually worked it out. The little contraption thingy that you saw me using earlier is called a Simflex Expanding Sewing Gauge. And you can use it for different things, but one of them is for button placement and it is clutch like you don't have to do the extra math to figure out how much space goes between each button it does it for you you just lay it down and mark it so i am glad i purchased this now everything is done so let's get into this reveal 
Overall, I think the cardigan is okay. Probably wouldn't pick it up in a store, but that's just me. I've never really been that gravitated towards cardigans, but I do see the potential in this one. I would change the pattern up a bit, like zhuzh up the sleeve, maybe add some volume, make the cuff on the sleeve a little tighter, maybe make it shorter, something to, you know, just add a little bit more oomph to this otherwise basic style. I do like the buttons from top of the sewer. I think they add a unique touch to the style. While I'm new to the sewing space, it means a lot that I can see other black women here in this space and killing it and creating their own businesses and just inspiring others. And I just hope that I'm doing the same. If you like this style in this video, go on and check out my video of the faux wrap sweater knit dress. It's a self-drafted style, but more importantly, another comfortable style. I will link that for you in the top right-hand corner. Until next time, guys, stay safe and keep designing your best life. Bye!